Good morning and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to work on this piece right here. I've already finished it as I'm doing this intro so that I can show you what the finished piece ends up looking like. And if you would like to learn how to make this, how I made it anyway, then um, keep watching. The full version with instructions will be available soon. I'm using a vintage ceramic mask as my face for this piece. This one has really small eye sockets, so I'm going to cover them instead of trying to inset a pair of eyes. I'm covering the back of the eye socket holes with tape, then stuffing behind it with aluminum foil to make sure that when I press the clay in on the front, it does not push the tape off the back. Then I'm going to move on to adding the clay over the front and I'm going to shape it into uh, what looks like closed eyes. Now you're gonna have to wait for this to dry overnight before you can come back and start again, but then we're going to um, put three coats of flesh-colored paint over it. If the piece you found, the, the vintage mask you have, has any texture at all, you're going to want to remove it. If it's hot glue, try using a heat gun and a razor to get it off. If it's textured paint, you may have to sand it. Adding glue to the back will make sure that the eyes stay stuck. Let it dry and then we're going to add one, two, three coats of flesh color paint. Then I apply a coat of white to what would be the mask area of the face. Two coats drying them in between with my heat gun. Trying it on the frame for I size. I usually seal the base layers with a clear matte spray paint like Mr. Super Clear. I did that off camera and let it dry. Now we're ready to start painting the sugar skull. Start with a black shadow to accent the skull's eye sockets. Here you can see the size and shape of the socket area that we want to mimic. Perfect symmetry is not easy to achieve, but you want to get as close as you can. I'm adding what I hope will end up looking like a lace pattern around the eyes. It starts with dots. Because we're working with black paint, let it dry completely before trying to touch it up. I'm using my gel pen to add the pattern. This will be sealed later with matte sealer. If your hands shake like mine do, you may need to go back and touch up a few flaws. I'm using gold metallic paint for a highlight here. And then repeat for the other eye. I'm adding a gloss black paint to just the eyelids so they will stand out more in photos. I'm using Sharpie Copper Metallic Paint Pen to add some decorations on the brow and I used my gel pen again to outline the details. Next I paint the nose hole. And then I start with the mouth. I decided to exaggerate the teeth for this makeup. Using a sharpie, I'm drawing a spider pattern on the forehead. This is a much larger face than the previous project, so I feel confident enough to just go for it. Now I'm using a silver metallic sharpie to add more detail around the eyes. Now to apply the eyelashes. There is a video in the description that shows this technique in full. I pre-cut the track lashes to length. Then I use UV gel to attach first one corner and then the other. Using the UV flashlight, I set the glue. And then repeat for the other side. Then I coat the lash line with more UV gel and put it in the nail oven for about two minutes. I'm adding some copper colored 
mica powder to the eyelids for a little shimmer and color. How much detail and color you want to add is completely up to you. I decided to keep this pretty neutral with just black, white, silver, copper, and gold. I decided the chin needed a little something, so I mirrored the web design onto the chin. I did add a little sparkle via some crystals. Now to add some shading and define the remaining skull features, starting with the space between the jawbone and the cheekbones. I'm using Artist Pigment Chalk to add the shadow this time. Adding shading along the nasal bone and some shading to the temple. You can see the kind of magic you can create with paint with this before and after shot. I love how this paint job turned out. Now for the frame. Step one, remove the glass. Step two, glue fabric to the matte back inside of the frame using Elmer's glue and fabric tack. Three, make sure it fits snugly into the frame again. Now I'm going to decide where the face is going to fit on the frame. Before I move on, I decided to tone down the bright metallic frame by painting it black and then rubbing off the high spots to bring back some of the shine and pattern. Now to decorate the sugar skull face. First, I pick out my flowers. So many lovely flowers to choose from. And I'm gonna need one of these little skulls. Well, flowers chosen. Now it's time to attach the face mask to the background. I made two holes in the background so I can tie the mask to it and then use hot glue to make it really secure. Next, I reassemble the frame and glue it together permanently. I plan to add a ruffled neck collar. I gathered the ruffle and dry fit it under the mask to see if it's too long or too short. It looks like it's too long. I'm going to shorten it a bit. Now everything gets glued together. I also decided that she needs hair because I'm not 100% loving how it looks without it. And I picked the curly Tibetan sheep fur, which I put on the same way I did the hair in the previous video, by folding it over, gluing it, and tucking it in at the edges of the, of the mask. And I added a little rhinestone necklace a cute little butterfly pendant. You can add more or less until you like the look. Whatever seems right to you. I accidentally broke the pendant and had to mount it to leather to make it lay flat again. Kidnapping a little skull from the one-legged skeleton. I don't think he'll miss it. But now we're done. That was the last touch. A little paint to add age to the design, and we're all done. I hope you enjoyed this crafting project, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time where we'll be creating this fun piece. See you then.